Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. I am Captain Xavier, and today we're going to be going over some basics on solenoids, as well as some basic circuits for solenoids. We will have a semi-auto uh, circuit, we will have a full auto circuit, and then we will have a select circuit that can choose between semi-auto and full auto. We will not be going into anything that involves burst, because that is going to require some sort of an Arduino, and that is more advanced than I want sh than I plan to get to in this video. I may get into that in the future. So let's talk about the basics of a solenoid. Solenoid is an electric device. It has two leads. They aren't exactly negative and positive. That's kind of like motors. Where Which one you connect to will determine what the solenoid does. In the case of motors, it'll make it spin one way, where if you switch, it'll then spin the other way. Similar here, if you set it up one way, it's going to pull the, uh, the center rod in one direction, and if you have it set up the other way, it will pull the rod in the other direction. And you can, in fact, have devices that switch back and forth. Um, this one is designed to only go one direction, and then when you release it, it returns. And that's typically what we're going to see in Nerf applications, because that can be very easily used as a pusher. Now this is a 12 volt solenoid, so I'm going to be using a 3S LiPo that I have some leads connected up to. So we're going to connect negative to our negative, and then when we touch the positive to what we've determined to be the positive, it will activate the solenoid and it will go forward. And it's essentially semi-auto. If I leave it connected, it will simply stay in, but you don't want to do that because you will overheat the solenoid and can, in fact, melt it. You can also potentially damage your battery doing that as it will be draining. It's similar to holding down the rev trigger on a flywheeler that's been jammed. It's not good for it. So we want to be able to easily release it, and we don't want to have to keep disconnecting the wire. So we are, of course, going to graft in a switch. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And this can conveniently be disconnected right here. And we're going to graft in a single switch. So we're going to connect the battery now to the normally open pin on our switch. And we're going to graft this wire onto the normal or the com and then we're going to connect it. Now when we connect it, nothing happens, but every time we push the switch, it goes. And now we have essentially a semi-auto circuit. Every time we push it, it will activate. Now we are going to graft in a second switch because most blasters that are going to have this kind of a pusher are going to be flywheel. And so we want a red switch. So that is what the second switch will be. We're going to graft it in the exact same way, splice it in. Uh, battery is going to go to our normally open, and then we're going to connect COM to the normally open on our other switch. And this creates um, an electric lock of sorts. The If this is our trigger, our fire, it doesn't do anything unless the rev is pulled. And then it does. So unless you're revving the flywheels, the pusher won't activate. And that way you don't push a, a dart into the flywheels when they're not spinning. It won't push unless the flywheels are going. So then this would, in, in addition to going to our trigger switch, would also go on to our flywheel assembly, and the negative would go to our flywheel assembly. So when we pull this one, it would rev, and then this one would activate our pusher. And that was all you need for a simple semi-auto flywheeler. This, you could put this in a strife, you could put this in whatever you wanted, and you'd have a semi-automatic solenoid pusher. But let's say you wanted a fully automatic pusher. That will be fairly simple. We are simply going to splice in a car blinker relay, which are relatively cheap. They got gotten on Amazon. I'll have the link for the one that I'm using down in the description. It also has two pins, one that is labeled B and one that is labeled L. B is for battery, L is for light. At least I assume that's what they are. So we are going to be connecting our battery to the B, and the L is going to go to the solenoid. So from our trigger switch, we connect to the B, and then from the L, we go to our solenoid. And now when we pull both switches, it oscillates, it fires, full on. And these things do are adjustable, so you can actually, if you use just a, a screwdriver, there's a, a knob here that you can crank all the way down, and now it is painfully slow. In fact, just unusably slow. What, what use would that be to anybody? But we can dial it all the way up, and we can get a reasonable 
rate of fire. That's a perfectly acceptable rate of fire. So there is our full auto using a simple, two simple switches and a simple relay. No fancy wiring, no programming, nothing like that. It's fairly straightforward. But let's say we want to be able to do both. We want to be able to choose between semi-auto or full auto. Well, for that, we're going to need another simple switch. This is a rocker switch. Um, it is, a, you could call it a selector switch. The key is that you need three pins. It needs to have three different pins. This one has three different positions. That is not strictly speaking necessary. Uh, in one position, it connects these two. In the other far position, it connects these two. And in the middle, it connects none. So we're kind of using that like a safety is how you could think of that. But the safety isn't necessary. The three pins are because we want to determine what signal is coming out of the middle by changing what signals go into either side. So. On one side, we're going to connect our full auto from the relay. It's going to be going into one side of the switch. Into the other side of the switch, we are simply going to have the output directly from this switch. So we're going to bypass the relay and go into the other side. So now, depending on the position of the switch, these are our two inputs, and the center is our output. And so we are going to connect white onto the output and connect that to our solenoid. And now, it's currently on safe, so if I push the switches, nothing happens. But if I switch it to this side, it should be connecting yellow through, so we should get semi-auto. And we do. If I hold it, it doesn't oscillate. Just the one, and if I switch the switch to the other side, now I have full auto. So it is a very simple way to have semi-auto and full auto using a solenoid without needing any kind of programming, any kind of additional green board. There is green board in the relay, of course. If you take this apart, it's just a simple green board. Most of this upper section is just completely empty. Uh, so it's very easy to fit this into a, a small shell. Uh, the solenoid is probably going to be the largest component, and depending on what kind of switch you use. But the wiring is really very straightforward. <clears throat> And I will, of course, have a diagram um, that'll be available on my Facebook page. And I may start posting the diagrams here if I can. I know that I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that. Um, so it'll be a lot easier with all this. It's a bit confusing, but uh, I will have diagrams for all three of these options uh, available. So there you have it. Fairly straightforward and simple circuits for a solenoid. If any of you know of a better way to do this or a cheaper way to do this or a more reliable or perhaps uh, more robust by all means, let me know down in the comments. I'm always up to learn new things, and if it's a really good idea, um, I may very well make a video on it and hopefully give you credit if I can remember to. But uh, there you have it. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching.